gentlemen, welcome to Three Lines Wrestling, the first time ever. We are live on the whole city hall. I'm Neil Windass, the chairman of Three Lines Wrestling, and I want to say a massive thank you to everybody for being a part of our revolution. Everyone in attendance, to everybody watching live on Super Network TV, to every one of the incredibly talented wrestlers in the back. Thank you. We've all been there. As we've all been there. As we've gone from a show that people thought would die after one episode to being the number one destination for independent wrestling in the world. So without any further hesitation, any further hesitation let's go through tonight's card. We've been on the show with John Lynch versus GFS. And DJ Stark going on the wall. And Hammerstein. We've also got an official statement from Joe Barron as to why he attacked John and Richard. And then, you know what I mean, and then the undefeated Cole Renner will be defending his World Heavyweight Championship against the Lewis JP Masters. We hope you all have an amazing night tonight. So for one last time, welcome to the number one destination for independent wrestling in the world. Welcome to Three Lions Wrestling. Gentlemen, my name is Michael Anthony, and I would like to welcome you to Three Lions Episode 5. I am glad to be commentating here this evening, as I am usually used to commentating bigger shows in the more mainstream side of this wrestling business, but I'm glad to be commentating the independent side here with so many hard hitters on this card tonight, like GFS right here, Hans Hammerstein, and Cole Renner. It is sure to be a very entertaining card for me to commentate here tonight. his opponent. From Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, he weighed in tonight at 175 pounds, the avant god John Lynch! And speaking of entertainment, here comes somebody who sure does know how to entertain the crowd and get them up off their feet, the avant god John Inch. And we saw here at the beginning of the show our promoter Neil coming out to his entrance theme, the crowd wild as always here in England. And of course, they're clapping along to John Inch's theme song choice of tonight, Al Dente by Jack Stalbert. 
Now this will be a very interesting clash of styles between the brutal grappler and striker, striker, excuse me, Gary Frank Simpson, compared to John Inch, who wrestles supposedly just for the fun of it, and I can't quite describe what his wrestling style is, despite having commentated a few of his matches before. John Inch, very chill. No worries about him, and here we go. Gary Frank, ready for this matchup. Very calm as well. Ring the bell. John Inch telling GFS to bring it on. Now I gotta wonder if John Inch knows what he's getting himself into. He has faced very serious wrestlers before, such as Wayne Watson and PWR. Maybe he's gonna find a similar type of wrestling style here with Gary Frank. He goes into the collar elbow tie up. And gets in his hammer lock position. Wrenching on him, but Gary Frank has a superior grappling skill, turns it into a headlock of his own. But now Gary Frank gets to run the ropes as John Inch dropped down in a leapfrog. And oh, look at this! Drop toe hold, and he takes the opportunity to mock Gary a little bit. And oh, Gary went for a strike there, clearly frustrated with what John Inch was going for. And now look at this, John's going for his finishing submission maneuver early in the match. But Gary Frank getting out of it himself. Look at that superior athleticism, getting out of those aren't meant to bend. And he follows up with an exploder suplex. And what an impressive kip up from the 217 pound Gary Frank Simpson and oh geez hammers in an elbow drop disrespectful flare but a kick out right at two from John Inch as I said John Inch has said that he wrestles almost exclusively just to have fun in that ring but do not underestimate him because he will still try to get the victory as any wrestler should Gary Frank a little bit of laissez-faire grounded headlock and now look at this a flurry of nice knife edge chops from John Inge backing him into the corner and just a flurry of more forearms and chops and he's just stomping a mud hole into GFS John Inge with the advantage here his nickname the Avant God, very befitting for his Avant Guard style of wrestling. Now Gary Frank turns the tables in his advantage with that vertical suplex and now a laissez fair cover of his own, but that only gets just barely a two count from John Inch. Not a professional pin by any means. Gary Frank backing him into the corner and now a flurry of back elbows in the corner dropping down John Inch and oh sliding forearm now he's on the apron and he falls up with a tope atomico signature combo there from Gary Frank but just a two count again against John Inch very smart wrestling here from the grappler extraordinaire GFS he's staying on John Inch constant covers now he's got this brutal gut wrench suplex he's maintaining waist control for a second one now look at this he's not letting go he's just throwing around John Inch like a child right now oh geez a fourth one and he's still not letting go of John Inch just seems to be mocking him right now and oh what a mistake there because John Inch was able to get a moment of reprieve and now look at this rolling crucifix position and expert application turns it into a beast bite type of submission from the crucifix position he's got locked in tight John Inch has quite the underrated technical submission ability as he has been able to show before against people like Wayne Watson getting out of sticky situations in very creative ways. But now Gary Frank 
using his upper body strength to wedge his way out of the beast bite. And now Ojanich staying on top of him with the with the deception and disorientation goes into a sunset flip roll up. Oh, and he kicks out into a different type of submission. John Inch had that scouted. He had a plan that GFS was not aware of. And through that roll up pin just caught him into yet another submission maneuver. Notice how it's targeting the arms. That sets up for John Inch's arm bar finisher. Those aren't meant to bend. And yes, that is the name of his finisher. But now GFS gets out of it. Hammerlock position into a lariat that turns him inside out. He goes for the cover, but he just barely kicks out. John Inch staying in this debut matchup for him. And imagine how impressive it would be for John Inch to pick up the victory against Gary Frank Simpson, somebody who has held multiple championships before and defeated big names in this business. Oh my God! Inverted Alabama slam off the ropes. And he immediately goes into a submission of his own. With this STF locked in nice and tight. Look at how the legs are laced. The arms are underneath the chin, grabbing the jaw. Very expert application here from the experienced Gary Frank Simpson. But John Inch able to find a way to wiggle out. Now, oh look at this shoulder block there. And he turns it into a Pele kick as well. Now this seems to be a setup to a signature arm orientated combo that John Inch does in almost every match. Usually sets it up for those aren't meant to bend after. He falls through with an arm ringing slam. Slamming down Gary Frank on the back of his head and his shoulder. But interestingly enough, it doesn't seem like John Inch is going for those aren't meant to bend. Maybe he was just using that to subdue GFS and get the advantage himself. Now John Inch putting him against the ropes. What is he looking for here? Seems to be waking him up. Goes off the ropes, but oh, Gary Frank meets him on the other side. Oh, dodges that, and oh, a big knee strike of John Inch's own. A little bit of back and forth here. Meeting each other on each side of the ring. Another forearm from Gary Frank and a disrespectful slap. Telling him he has the advantage here, but John Inch meets him again. With a big front drop kick to the chest. Knocking down John Inch. Or knocking down GFS, excuse me. John Inch hyping up the crowd here. The very vocal British crowd now dropped down and... Oh, look at this! Caught him into an impressive gut wrench suplex yet again. The tilt's a whirl into it. What an impressive transition by Gary Frank. Oh, gut wrench number three. He's got him in that same position again. Oh my god, powers him down with the power bomb. Stays for the cover, but John Inch still kicks out in this debut matchup for the avant-garde. Gary Frank screaming out to the crowd. But I believe he's looking to finish this. Yep, he's going for the hollowing elbow part two. Oh, but look at this. John Inch had it scouted. Imploding suplex. What impressive reversal. He goes for the cover. One, two. Oh, and a kick out by Gary. Let's get a replay on that right now. Impressive reversal there. Gary Frank always putting people away with the hollowing elbow part two. But John Inch was able to scout it right away. You gotta wonder if he's done his homework to face his debut opponent. Now John Inch tuning up a comeback here. Multiple forearms, dodges the clothesline, and a spine buster. Now signaling for his final piece in his signature comeback. Pendulum Bronco Buster. Squashing Gary Frank in the corner. 
But John Inch isn't finished yet. He's going up to the top. And oh my god, look at the extension on that. Five star frog splash planting GFS. And now he's setting up for his cyclone Enzigiri clockwork energy, but it misses. And now Gary Frank stays on John Inch. Oh, rebounds off the ropes for a decapitating clothesline and he goes for the cover yet again. Oh, but it's still not able to put away John Inch. John Inch has proven to the wrestling world his resiliency before. You gotta wonder how well is that going to hold out against a striker like Gary Frank. Now he gets him up. Oh, oh he's looking for one of his finishing maneuvers, he calls it Kanichiwa, bitches. But John Inch was able to Hurricane Rana his way out of the way. And now look at this. He's got it locked in this time. Those aren't meant to bend. And the title stays true to the submission hold. Look at the way his arm is bending. The crowd definitely behind the debuting John Inch. Chanting for GFS to tap out. Oh, but GFS was able to slip his way out of the submission hold. Oh, but it gets met with a super kick. John Inch, and oh my god! That's it. That's definitely it. What a back and forth battle we've been having so far. But as John Inch tried to seal the deal, Gary Frank just nailed the final nail to John Inch's coffin. He's definitely out cold. He is unable to do anything right now, but Gary Frank, oh uh, yeah, he's going for it. Hollowing elbow, part two, oh my God. Ringing him on the ropes, and that is absolutely it. Yep, he gets the three count against John Inch. Gary Frank winning against the Avant God. Such a back and forth battle, but Geez, let me tell you about a dominating finisher. Hollowing Elbow Part 2. He's done this before against opponents such as Orion James. Where he just knocks them out standing on their feet and lets their limp body hit the ropes neck first. What an utterly disgusting finisher. Gary Frank victorious on this episode. Now we'll be right back as Gerard has a few words up next. Jordan Richard. Jordan Richard, you know your name, Jordan Richard, has been resounding in my head over the past few months that I've been on a professional wrestling absence. Jordan, I, I, I want you to understand something, and I want you to hear this clearly. I want you to hear this so profound that it will just go through your bones, Jordan. That's what I want you to hear this for. Seven years. Seven years I have been here. Seven long, long years of trying to prove myself Though people say I'm unproven. I was in the biggest of spots. I was in the biggest of companies. But still, I was deemed unproven. I have been here seven years. I have seen people come and I have seen people go. But the most hurtful the most painful thing that is done inside of me is seeing people jump in front of me seeing people jump in front of the line seeing people jump in front of me where I am supposed to be getting my positions getting my championships getting my opportunities So, Jordan Richard, when I left True One Pro in Japan, when I left, you said, and I hear this so profoundly now, you said that you would take my spot. 
and Jordan Richard, I have come to let you know you will be the last person to ever, and I mean ever, try to do it. I am sick and I am tired of being jumped in front of. I am sick and I am tired of being called unproven. So I came here to Three Lions to prove that not only am I still a jewel to this professional wrestling world, but Jordan Richard, I am here to take what you call a jewel. So Jordan Richard, yes, I interfered in your match with Magnifico and you. Yes, I came in and I dropped you right on your neck and head with the Brain Buster. Yes, I did, and I loved every single moment of it. And Jordan Richard, until I get what I want, there will be more collateral damage than ever in three lines. I want each and every person to listen. I want each and every person to learn because I am who I say I am. I may be unproven to you, but after I'm done, I will be proven to more people in this world. Quite a few seething words from the jaded Gerard Bowden. But now you want to talk about Jaded, up next comes the quote-unquote superior TJ Stark versus Hans Hammerstein. Now we just saw a very intense back-and-forth battle to open this episode, but now we may get a chance to see things slow down and get even more brutal in this matchup between TJ Stark and Hans Hammerstein. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall. First, making his way to the ring. From Hackney in London, he weighed in tonight at 186 pounds, the superior T.J. Star. As you can hear, it's not a very warm welcome for T.J. Stark. What a nasty turn and attitude he's had since being released from True One Pro. He just turned his back on the fans when he came here to Three Lions for at the pay-per-view Pride is Forever. And now he just, he seems to not care about anything except for his own success. And just, he's expressed utter disgust for the way he's been treated in this business. But that does not mean that justifies his crude way of wrestling nowadays. I have made no qualms with saying that I am not a fan of dirty wrestling. That is a pure sport in the middle of that ring. And the things that TJ Stark has done ever since this attitude change has just been really, really disgusting. Such as ripping off a luchador's mask on Jordan Richards Mexican tour just what an utter disrespect crowd very vocal about their displeasure with TJ Stark as well and oh no now why is he grabbing a microphone who gave him a mic I am 
sick and I am tired of being an afterthought. I have been held back my whole goddamn career. I was held back in Japan and I'll be damned if I let it happen again. But you see, tonight, tonight my opponent could very well be my toughest one to date. Hammerstein is possibly the best submission wrestler in the world, or one of at least. And pound for pound, he could definitely be considered the strongest. He was born with wrestling in his blood. His father was a wrestler. His father's 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 father was a wrestler. You get the point. When it comes to wrestling, he is as pure as they come. But he is not T.J. Stark. And if this absolute dickhead thinks he's going to come down to this ring, out wrestle and embarrass me in front of all you bellings, he's got another thing coming. I'm going to show each and every one of you muppets that T.J. Stark is the best thing to ever happen to wrestling. That T.J. Stark is doomed. Well, speak of the devil, and he will show up. Out comes Hans Hammerstein, as this match was scheduled, so... Honestly, I think it was poor form for TJ Stark to be talking so much garbage about this... ...terrifying athlete, Hans Hammerstein. There's a reason his nickname is the Berlin Brutalizer. I'm sure TJ Stark is about to find that out firsthand. I'm the from Berlin, Germany. He weighed in tonight at 205 pounds. He is the Berlin Brutalizer, Hans Hammerstein. And when TJ Stark called Hans Hammerstein pound for pound one of the strongest people in this business, you can understand why when he weighs 205 pounds but he's able to deadlift twice his weight, he's able to deadlift 400 pounds. He is by no means a small man, but in terms of wrestling, he is kind of the ordinarily sized man, but his strength is completely freakish. And he is a natural wrestling bravado. Being in the legendary German wrestling family, the Hammersteins, as said in his name. He is born for this business, and it is very unwise for anybody to take Hans Hammerstein lightly, no matter who you are. I'd even say that people like Zodiac or anybody who's the largest person in wrestling should be afraid of Hans Hammerstein. But yet TJ Stark is in this matchup with way too much confidence. You gotta wonder how that's going to play against the Berlin Brutalizer. And here we go. Starting off the match, they size each other up and go straight for the collar elbow tie-up. Now Hans Hammerstein, as previously mentioned, with just far superior strength, backs up TJ into the corner. Now we get a breakup from the ref here. I'm sure that was a struggle for the ref to do against Hans' iron grip. And now, oh... Gripping onto that arm there and just shoulder blocking against TJ Stark and oh my god Just pure power there dragging TJ Stark there from the shoulder position Now we get a quick stare down here goes back into the collar elbow tie up and notice how every single time they go into the tie up Hans Hammerstein is getting the advantage because he is much, much superior on the grappling side compared to TJ Stark. And now look at this, goes straight into the chin hold. But TJ is able to turn it into a ground headlock of his own. Now he gets in the headlock there with the legs. Hans Hammerstein. Oh, but look at that. Gar or TJ Stark, excuse me, was able... To transition it straight back into the grounded headlock. Hammering in more strikes, but he gets caught into yet another head scissors. From the pure muscle man that is Hans Hammerstein. And now look at that straight back. 
into the grounded headlock. TJ Stark is not letting go of it. And now Hans Hammerstein locks in a headlock of his own and arm drags, hip tosses, excuse me, TJ Stark out of it. We're still in the feeling out position of this match. As Hans Hammerstein powers TJ Stark back into the corner yet again. Now TJ trying to back his way back out. But Hans just far too strong to power against. Now the ref has to break it up again as they were touching the ropes. TJ Stark, surprised. I'm surprised we're getting any clean breaks from TJ. Expert evasion there. No, oh, look at that. As I was mentioning it, he went for the eye rake there, but Hans Hammerstein took umbrage to that disrespect, and now is just slapping the back of the head of TJ Stark. And now, oh, geez, multiple ripcord maneuvers there ending with the big knee strike and oh a super kick from tj stark backs him in the corner oh look at this look at this luchador style of wrestling expert transition there from superior tj stark from the wrist lock arm drag from the top into this cross arm bar impressive evasion here from the British professional wrestler TJ Stark. And now going back to work on Han Hammer, Hans Hammerstein's arm. And look at that. Transitions, transitions it into a Kimura lock. Sitting down deep into it. But Hans is able to roll out of it and hammer his way out. Pun unintended. Now look at this. Oh, look at that expert amateur style transition into the into the ankle lock but tj stark is able to get out of it and he dodges that barrel barrel roll leg sweep flips his way out of the german and now shoulder blocks from tj stark but hands puts him over the top tj following straight to the top rope and oh oh look at that oh my god Wow, what a transition there. From the somersault senton, turned it into a power bomb, which he immediately followed into a Boston Crab. But TJ Stark, quick to get out of it, knowing the danger of being in that submission hold with such a technical bravado like Hans Hammerstein. And now he's just kicking in those legs, dropping down TJ Stark. And oh, geez. A big European puts him in the corner and he's falling with even more European uppercuts. Puts him in the corner and oh geez another running one. Rocking TJ Stark's world. But TJ able to flip out of it. Now look at this quickening the pace for TJ Stark and oh my god. Pop up Hurricane Rana. Takes down Hans Hammerstein. And TJ Stark... Oh my god, what an impressive display of athleticism with that insane variation of the Sasuke special. He throws hands, Hammerstein back in the ring. TJ Stark going the more lucha style route with his offense here tonight. And oh, look at that! Hans Hammerstein was able to back away from the front row neckbreaker. And turned it into a roll through Boston Crab. Targeting the back and legs of TJ Stark, but TJ able to flip out of it. With that leg trap monkey flip. Now he's beckoning for hands to get up. Oh, throws him against the ropes, but look at this. Oh, Hans Hammerstein looking for a lucha style maneuver of his own. But TJ Stark was able to turn it into a tilt-a-world DDT. Oh, and he kicks out. Very close fall there. And now TJ Stark. Oh, what a beautiful moonsault from TJ Stark. And he goes for the cover. And a kick out from Hans Hammerstein. 
And this is what I'm talking about. TJ Stark is a very, very impressive professional wrestler. He is insanely athletic and does just beautiful techniques, but it's sad that he has to resort to these dirty tactics to face Hans Hammerstein like raking the eyes earlier. And now, look at this. Oh! Oh my god! A pop-up double rotation moonsault! But Hans Hammerstein was able to dodge it at the last minute. Now an arm-trapped neckbreaker stuns TJ. And Hans, oh my god, just lifting him like an absolute child. Drops him down from the arm. Hans Hammerstein, very intelligent professional wrestling here. He has so far targeted the legs, back, and arms of TJ Stark. Anytime that he's not able to get access at one arm, he goes to another. And, oh, went for a big penalty kick there. But TJ Stark was able to dodge it. Saw it coming. A drop down. Another drop down. And now he's just... Look at this. Evasive maneuvers by TJ Stark. Just disorientating Hans Hammerstein. And he, oh, went for the drop kick after that Hurricane Rana. But T or Hans Hammerstein was able to dodge it. But TJ Stark stays on it with his speedy offense. Against Hans Hammerstein and... Oh, look at that big hot shot by TJ Stark. TJ Stark, it's honestly very impressive. He's able to get this much offense against the Berlin Brutalizer. But that is due in part to the eye rake he did earlier. Oh, big shotgun knee strike. He goes for the cover. Oh, but he kicks out of the signature maneuver by TJ Stark. TJ Stark. A little surprised that he was able to kick out of the shotgun knee strike there. But now was TJ looking for here? Oh, runs for it, but Hans Hammerstein catches him with a gut kick. Now in the powerbomb position. But TJ getting out of it again. Oh, what's this? Butterfly position. Oh, jeez, this... Oh, God, what a brutal pile driver. A butterfly pile driver plants Hans Hammerstein on his scalp and picks up the victory with honestly impressive dominating offense against Hans Hammerstein. TJ Stark getting the victory in our second match of the night against Hans Hammerstein, proving that he is superior in a way. But it's still such a shame what he has to resort to. I am back. This is my Fight Club 
Welcome to the slaughterhouse. And you can enjoy that event here on the Super Network TV channel along with so many other events that are coming out here on this channel. But now it's time for our main event of this evening. Let's talk about this World Heavyweight title defense between the undefeated Cole Redder and one of the hybrid four JP Masters. Out comes JP Masters, a very terrifying opponent in his own right, an incredibly skilled martial artist, much like his fellow Hybrid 4 members, as he comes out here to 3 Lions Pro, but rest assured we will not see the other members of Hybrid 4 here tonight, because I believe that JP Masters would like to prove on his own his sheer skill in that ring, that cerebral attitude with his professional wrestling style. If you want to talk about terrifying opponents, out comes our world heavyweight champion, Cole Renner. This sheer Irish brute. He is insanely fast for his size. There is a reason his nickname is the War Machine. Has not lost a single match since his professional wrestling debut. That is exactly what has caused him to be our world champion of our independent professional wrestling promotion. As he gives a cold stare to that ring. This is just another day in the office for Cole Renner. Quite the large opponent, but it's going to be quite the shell shock when he shows you the speed he has within that ring. Absolute intimidation in his size and prowess as he walks down to the ring and gets in. gotta wonder what is JP Masters plan against Cole Renner Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is our main event of the evening and is scheduled for one fall. First, the challenger. He weighed in tonight at 227 pounds from Stevenage in Hertfordshire. He is one fall of the hybrid four, JP Masters. 
and his opponent, he weighed in tonight at 264 pounds from Blackskull, Northern Ireland. He is the reigning, defending, undisputed, three-line wrestling world heavyweight champion, the War Machine, Cole Runner. Now, as you can hear, a sizable weight advantage from Cole Renner, and you have to imagine that comes with a strength advantage. And here we see the tail of the tape, not only a weight advantage, but a height advantage as well. But JP Masters has the experience advantage. And honestly, I might even say the technical ability advantage. Being an insanely skilled martial artist that he is. Now here we go, starting with just that cold stare down by Cole Renner, and we ring the bell. And we just get this piercing stare down from the war machine to JP Masters. Now, go straight into the collar elbow tie up. Intense tie up from these two, and now Cole Runner goes for the waist lock. But a standing switch by JP Masters takes it over with the waist control. He turns it into a grounded headlock. Cole Runner takes him down with superior rate leg strength with the headlock there. But JP Masters finds himself in a different headlock from Cole Runner. Now look at this, surprisingly able to back him off there. Drop down a leapfrog by JP Masters. Oh, oh, you could tell JP was going for some sort of switch maneuver there. But Cole Runner was able to scout it and oh my lord! A big shot early on in this match. Almost a warning from Cole Runner with that big pop-up European. Now he backs up. JP Masters into the corner. I think he believes the danger he's in with JP Masters. He's trying to avoid any strikes at all cost from Masters, but he could not avoid that shotgun dropkick there. Launching him into the turnbuckle. And now JP Masters. Oh, geez. With the wrist control. You can hear that kick from backstage now gets the wrist control again and turns it into Kamara lock expert application here sitting down deep very hard for Cole Renner to get out from this position if he falls back there's more pressure on it if he goes forward then JP Masters can put more pressure on it but Cole Renner is able to roll out of it and oh my lord! Just socked him in the face with that right. It causes JP Masters to try to rethink his strategy out on the outside. You can tell JP Masters is trying to size up his opponent, trying to formulate what he has to do to take out Cole Renner. Tries going for a strike of his own. But Cole Renner just hammers in those haymakers. Knocking down JP Masters for a little bit. And now just, oh my lord. Oh, big knee strike there from JP Masters. Oh, and a big kick taking down the bigger man. And oh, big knee strike. Directly to the face. Didn't connect with any of the chest. That was all to the face. Now JP Masters taking over with these elbow strikes in the corner. Taking down Cole Renner. And Cole Renner seems to be in a little bit of trouble here. He's been hit with the things that he's been trying to avoid this whole time. And that's those dangerous, dangerous strikes from the Hybrid 4 member JP Masters. And oh my lord. Every time JP Masters kicks you. It sounds like a baseball bat hitting a tree. 
That is what makes him so incredibly dangerous. Oh, went for a rolling elbow there, but Cole Renner caught him into the belly-to-belly -belly suplex. That seems to have rocked J.P. Masters a bit. Maybe compromised his equilibrium. And now, Cole Renner follows up with another one. Trying to ensure his victory and a successful title defense here in our main event of the evening. Now look at this, he's just allowing JP Masters to get up. Oh, and a big German suplex nearly throws him through the turnbuckle. Cole Renner is just slowly picking apart JP Masters. But Masters was able to avoid that belly to belly. It hits a clothesline, knocking down Cole Renner. In this heavyweight matchup, JP Masters waits for him to get up and he goes for another clothesline, but Cole Renner's able to dodge it. And oh my lord! Another insanely powerful suplex, this time a choke toss. Throwing JP Masters halfway across the ring. Oh! Big spear from the 260 pounder and ah! Oh, Falls up with yet another brutal overhead belly to belly. Now, oh my lord, just picking him up again and oh god, just throwing around JP Masters like he weighs nothing. JP steadying himself in the corner here and oh, oh my god. And this is what we're talking about, that insane speed from Cole Renner, and now he's maybe setting up for the Black Skull boot. And oh, he misses it! And oh my god, a big single leg knee strike of JP Master's own, nailing Cole Renner. He goes for the cover, oh, and a kick out right before three by Cole. And oh god, now JP Masters has him right where he wants him. And notice how that knee doesn't even have a knee pad. Just bare bone against the side of Cole Renner's face. And now he goes for that arm and the leg yet again. Maybe seeing if he could get a submission hold, a submission tap out against Cole Renner. But Cole expertly hooks the leg and powers his way out of it. Now OG's oh powerbomb position. And oh god, buckle bomb stumbles JP and oh my god, black skull boot! That could be all she wrote! Oh my god, JP Masters kicked out of the black skull boot. Cole Renner is not too phased by it. Usually when most people kick out finishers, it stuns that person. But Cole Renner's just setting up for another. Oh, but he misses the black skull boot. Second attempt and oh my god! Did you hear that strike? And oh a flurry of hand strikes and oh a big kick and another one! And oh, oh my god! Spinning hook kick! Square! On the jaw and oh and he follows up with another! Knocking Cole Renner silly and he goes for the cover. Oh, oh my god! JP Masters! JP Masters just knocked out Cole Renner for the victory! I... I don't know what to say, I wasn't expecting that. Two brutal hook kicks. Knocks Cole Renner out, and now we have a new World Heavyweight Champion in JP Masters. And this is what I talk about with a dangerous striker. Well, that is all, ladies and gentlemen. Shock upset victory here by JP Masters. I've been Michael.